We welcome you to Miles Chapel Baptist Church, located at 3911 Dickey Mill Road in Mevin, North Carolina, where the pastor is Pastor Scotty Terrain, preaching a powerful message that will definitely bless your heart and soul. The church vision is impacting, transforming, and empowering people's lives for victorious living. Yes, this church is designed for you and mine, where the pastor is Pastor Scotty Terrain, preaching a powerful message every Sunday morning. Yes, the church location is 3911 Dickey Mill Road in Mevin, North Carolina. The telephone number for prayer, information, or directions is 578-1450. Make sure you come out to this awesome church where the pastor is Pastor Scotty Terrain of Miles Chapel Baptist Church, located again at 3911 Dickey Mill Road in Mevin, North Carolina. Now get ready for a heavy word of God from Pastor Scotty Terrain. Get ready for the word. Luke, the 17th chapter. The 11th verse. It says, Now it happened as he went to Jerusalem that he passed through the midst of Samaria and Galilee. Uh, then as he entered a certain village, there met him ten men who were lepers, who stood afar off. They lifted up their voices and said, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. So when he saw them, he said to them, go show yourself to the priest. And so it was that as they went, they were cleansed. And one of them, when he saw that he was healed, returned and with a loud voice glorified God. Fell down on his face at his feet, giving him thanks. And he was a Samaritan. Uh, We'll stop there. I want to share from a thought this morning. Lessons from ten lepers. Lessons from ten lepers. Let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we need you now. Ask that you would use my mind. God, that you would use my voice. Stand in my body to declare your word. To the end that your people would be blessed, that someone would be encouraged, that someone's Life would be made better because they see you. So, Father, we ask now that you be glorified even in this hour. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Lessons from ten lepers. This morning we've come to take a look at a very familiar passage of Scripture. One of those old Sunday school lessons that we all grew up on. Uh, But one of the dangers of texts such as these is that uh, we uh, don't look for new meaning in in texts that we have heard and studied before. Uh, Some of us have rested on and relied on our first revelation that we got the first time we read about these ten lepers. But as the word of God is constantly moving, it proceedeth out of the mouth of God. It moves, it constantly meets us at different places. Uh, This text should not mean to you now what it meant to you in Sunday school. This text should not mean to you what it meant to you last year in the middle of whatever you were going through. But as God grows us, as he uses us, as he enhances our lives, As we look at his word, it begins to address different areas in our lives. Uh, So this morning, I ask that you wouldn't, uh, don't sleep on the preacher. Uh, Don't come into the text with any preconceived notions, but that we are open to hear what it is God has to say to us through these lepers. Uh, Luke has um, painstakingly written about Jesus as he is traveling and he comes into the village, he comes into, I say, a certain village, and he sees 
that there are 10 lepers there. And as he's approaching the village, the lepers are there, but they're standing, the Bible says, afar off. Um, for all of the Bible scholars in here, you already understand that Leviticus tells us uh, that they can only be cleansed through the nod of the priest. And so while they're in active uh, leprosy, if you will, they had to be uh, away from everybody. Uh, they couldn't associate with everybody because it was a contagious disease, and so they were on the outskirts of the town. As a matter of fact, they had to, as they walked about, some of them had bells on their garments that alerted folk that, that the, the lepers were coming in their direction. Uh, if they saw folk approaching them, they had, they had to scream, unclean, unclean. All of this was to save other folk who had not been contaminated with the disease of leprosy. So they're standing afar off, and Jesus is coming into town. And, and, and the text says that they began to cry. They lifted up their voices and said. Now, uh, the thing that, 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 that blessed me when I looked at this, um, they're in a bad condition. They're in a bad state. And, and they, very could have, they very well could have decided this is our plight for life. So we're just going to stay out here on the outskirts of town and... Let it be what it is. Uh, but it says that they lifted up their voices uh, and said, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. There were ten lepers, but there was one message. Ten folk were in a messed up situation, but there was one message to Jesus. And what that helps me to understand is the power of unity. Okay, my first point is this. Don't become satisfied with dissatisfaction. Don't become satisfied with dissatisfaction. They made up in their minds where they were in life was not their end state, so they were not going to stay there. Come on, how many, how many of you know that we live in a dysfunctional world? Yeah. Uh, we have schools who aren't teaching. We got families that don't love. We have law enforcement that is not enforcing the law, but breaking the law. The world in which we live is full of dysfunction. But the challenge for us is to continue to believe God even in the midst of the mess. Uh, because quite often it's easier to settle for where I am. It's easier for me to just say, okay, this is my plight in life. I'm just going to stay here. It's, it, it, I, you know, I ain't gonna, I'm not going to kick against the prick. Uh, that's too much energy. It requires too much of me. So I'm going to stay right here. When God has called us to do bigger and better. Uh, it's real easy to settle for the job that does not challenge you. When God has already told you, it's time to move. Mm -hmm. It's real easy for you to stay in the unhealthy relationship because now you have the mentality that a piece of man or a piece of woman is better than being alone. Just look straight ahead. Uh, it's easy to settle for everything in our lives that's wrong rather than to deal with them and put the devil in his place. We have, been, we have become a society that is satisfied with dissatisfaction. But I've come to tell you this morning, when you find yourself in a situation and you get tired of being tired, you'll cry out to the Lord. And that's what we find with these lepers. They were banished to the outside of town. And, and I'm, I would imagine, just like anybody else, they had dreams and aspirations. But because of the law, the validity, the, Levitical law, they were bound to be out on the outskirts of town, but they wanted to do things. They wanted to accomplish some things. So when they see Jesus coming, they. Mm -hmm. They see him coming and they begin to cry out. Here is here's the thing that caught me. You have to be observant to see Jesus. Jesus doesn't come in with a parade. The band doesn't lead Jesus into town, but he has the ability to sometimes slip into town and out of town unnoticed. So if you are not expecting him to show up, if you're not looking for him to show up, you'll miss him. As a matter of fact, when blind Bartimaeus is healed, the text teaches that Jesus had already entered into Jericho and he was on his way. But you don't see him. 
if you're not looking, if you're not expecting. But these ten lepers had a spirit of expectation. Even in their sickness, even in their banishment, even in being alone, just them ten against the world, they knew that if they could cry out to Jesus and he heard their cry, he could get some results. I don't know where you find yourself today. I don't know what your challenge is, but I've come to tell you this morning, if you'll cry out to the Lord, you can get some results. Sometimes he'll allow us to get into a place where man can't help us, our friends can't help us, our, uh, our phone calls can't help us, our resume can't help us. But it is in those times when we cry out to the Lord, he shows up. Because he'll never do what you can do. He shows up when you get to the end of what you can do. He shows up and does what he does. But you've got to trust him. Uh, what I've learned is you don't call somebody you don't trust. I'm not going to call somebody uh, to change a tie. I'm not going to call somebody to change a tie that can't change a tie. Huh? If my engine is ticking and, and, and my transmission is going out, I'm not going to call somebody's watching windows. Because my faith in them is to watch the windows. You got to understand, see, the challenge to your faith is never a failure if you place it in the right source. Because when things go south and, and, and we have faith and things don't move or don't change, it's not because we didn't have enough faith. It's because we placed our faith in the wrong place. Anybody guilty? Don't raise your hand. Guilty of placing your faith in the wrong place place, in the wrong people, in the wrong job, in the wrong situation, and, and nothing happened or it got worse. But when you called out to the Lord, when you called the Lord, when you cried unto the Lord, he showed up and began to shift some stuff. He showed up and started to make ways out of no ways, ways that you couldn't see because they weren't there. He has that ability when we cry out to him. But you just can't cry out to be crying out. You got to cry out because you have faith. Proverbs 3, 5, and 6 says, trust in the Lord. Y'all know it. With all thine heart and lean not to your own understanding, but in all your ways acknowledge him and he shall direct your path. Uh, they trusted in the Lord. They saw him and they cried out and they knew he would address their situation. Mm -hmm. uh, second point is uh, after they have cried out, they didn't wait for the situation to change before they changed their direction. Ah, okay, okay. It says, they lifted up their voices and said, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. How many times have we been guilty of trying to wait on the problem before we take it to Jesus? How many times have we been guilty of trying to fix the problem instead of giving it to the Lord? How many times have we been guilty of bringing it to the altar and going back and sitting down? And when we go back, we take it back with us. Uh, because sometimes you got to understand that you've got to give it to him. You can't wait for the manifestation, but you've got to change directions. Even We have folk in the world now who will tell you, I'll come to church when I get it together. And some of us in here may have said that at one point in our lives. But if you in here now, you understand that if you wait till you get it all together, you'll never come. Because even after you get here and been here for a while, you still got stuff going on. You're still dealing with challenges. You're still trying to get stuff right. You're still asking God to regulate your mind. You're still asking God to bridle your tongue. You're still asking God to guard your heart. You still got issues. But you can't wait for everything to get cleaned up to change your direction. Mm-hmm. They don't wait. They don't wait. But they cast all their cares, as, as 1 Peter uh, 5 and 7 says, they cast all their cares upon him. See, when you cast your cares upon the Lord, you can change direction because you don't have that weight on you anymore. When you cast your care, when you give it to him, you say, Lord, I don't know how you're going to work it out. But what I do understand is you have the ability to work it out, that you have never failed me. So I'm going to depend on you and I'm going to shout now, although I don't see it right now, I know you're going to bring this thing to pass. Cast your cares. I know we go through things sometimes and our hearts are heavy and uh, 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 you know, and, and, and we're emotional, and that's, that's part of being human. 
But at the end of the day, when you get when you stand up, when you get up, when you come to yourself, you've got to cast your cares. Come on, truth be told, half us in here should have lost our minds. We should be at home on Prozac in the fetal position sucking our thumb right now. But the only thing that saved you was the fact that you cast your cares. Huh? The devil has a, has a way of showing up in our lives. Huh? Oh, Lord Jesus. Overseer Brooks always said he does more tracking and trailing than he does attacking. So when he shows up, he, he doesn't just pop into town. He's been watching from afar, and he understands what's going to take your feet from under you. So when he shows up, he's got the right stuff to take you out. And if you don't cast your cares on the Lord, it'll happen. Uh, but when you know you can cast your cares on the Lord, Satan can show up and knock you down. And you can get up and begin to dust yourself off and tell him you knocked me down this time, but I'm back up. Is that all you got? And when he comes back and knocks you down again, you get up a second time and dust yourself off. It's as long as you keep knocking, I'm going to keep getting up. Because the God I serve has the ability to deliver me from every situation and every circumstance. And even if he doesn't, I'm going to give him glory. Uh, I'm in a, in a pickle, I'm in a fix, and I can't see no way out, but I'm going to give you praise anyway. I'm going to bless you anyway because I know that my friend can't get me out. I, I, that, you know, that, I understood that the last emergency I went through, so uh, I can't count on my friends. The family has left me, so it's just me and God, and I, as I look back over my life, when I look back over my spiritual shoulder, I can see that he's never left me. He's never forsaken me. But he's always been there to support me. He's always been there to lead me out. He's always been there to cover me. And on those days when I could not walk, he was there to carry me. Because the God that we serve has the ability to step into your fiery furnace. And your fiery furnace. And your fiery furnace. And he doesn't bother to take us out. He just covers us where we are. Because the, the testimony is not in the, the bringing you out. He's going to bring you out. That ain't it. The testimony is I was in the fire and I survived. Huh? Huh? I went through it. He kept me through it. That's the testimony. Because somebody needs to hear it. Somebody needs to know that he has that ability. We're in the midst of a hopeless world. Folk are hurting. They don't know which way to turn. But we serve a God who is able, and we got to let him know he's able. Hey. He, he, he has a way, a sneaky way of showing up in our lives. Uh, parents, y'all can nod your head. He has a way. If he can't get to you, he has a way of showing up through your children. Same ones you done trained, same ones you've taught. But he has that way because he does more tracking and trailing than he does attacking. So what I have to do, because this is not about me, so I'm not going to talk about me, but if you happen to be in a place of having a 14-year-old teenager living in your house, you got to look beyond the flesh and understand it's the spirit. Okay, okay, all right. Uh, mm. But there's one thing. That, the next point is what they do amazes me, and, it, and it, it, it should encourage us because this is what we have to do. While you walk, God will work. While you walk, God will work. These 10 lepers who have been banished on the outskirts of town, who have sores on them, walking around screaming, unclean, unclean. These same ones who cried out to Jesus, the text says, they began to move and they did not have a promise. Mm -hmm. uh, the world now is so driven by the philosophy, I'll do for you if you do for me. Uh-huh. And so sometimes we don't move because somebody hadn't done something for us first. 
Okay, so what they do is they cry out to Jesus, and then they begin to move. Uh, they move because they understand uh, that he's given them a command. He says, go show yourself to the priest. He didn't say, if y'all feel like it. He didn't say, you know, if y'all really want to, y'all can go talk to the priest. He said, go show yourself to the priest. He gives them a command. One of the first things I learned in the military is you have to learn to obey commands when they are given to you by folk of authority. So the important piece we've got to get is we've got to understand who's in authority. Because if you really understand who's in authority, then you, when you hear the command, you'll move. It's not a matter of you hearing the command. You just got to understand who's in authority. Who's calling the shot? Whose word do I have to move on? And so he tells them to go show yourselves to the priest. He didn't say, go show yourselves to the priest and you'll be clean. He didn't say, go show yourself to the priest and as you go, I'll heal you. He says, go show yourself to the priest. Man, I'm calling out to you. I need healing. I'm out here with these sores on my body, and you talking about go show my. Come on, Jesus. I need you to heal me. I need you to move in my situation right now. And he's standing there saying, go show yourself to the priest. I ain't got time to be dealing with the priest, man. I need, Lord, I just speak a word and I'll be healed. And it, go show yourself to, and that's what we get caught up in. And sometimes we don't get things God has for us because they don't come packaged like we think they are. So we're going to stand there and argue with God on his methodology while he's simply saying, go show yourself to the priest. Because if you go into the priest, you obviously are moving in faith and you believe I'm going to heal you as you go. But we want to stand and we want to, come on, Lord, I need it to come this way. I need, you to, I need you to jump three times, turn around, stand on your wallet and give me a financial blessing. I need you to roll in the floor three times, hop three pews, and, and the Holy Spirit will show up. No, 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 just do what he said. We've made this thing too hard. We've made it too difficult. And so when folk want to come in and they want to give their life to Christ and they want to live a godly life, we roll out this list of can't do's. You can't do this. You can't do that. You can't do this. You can't do that. And so now we, the church has become a place of can't do's as opposed to a, a place of liberty. That's religion, y'all. Because if you come in and the spirit is in the place and the word gets in you, all of that can't do list will take care of itself. That's why I always say, don't worry about how low the pants are. If the word gets in them, the pants will come up. Don't worry about how short the skirt is. If the word gets in them, the hem will go down. Get the word in them. Go show yourselves to the priest. What are you saying? Just be obedient. I keep, this keeps coming back to me. Our blessing rests in our being obedient. And sometimes we don't move in obedience because it ain't difficult enough. Surely it's got to be more to it than that. Can't be that easy. Just turn around and start walking to the priest. Come on, Val, it's got to be harder than that. I'm just, just turn around and go. And so we're standing and we're wasting valuable time and we're staying in the situations in which we are simply because we have not heeded the command to just go show ourselves to the priest. But the text indicates as they turned and they went to show themselves to the priest, healing started coming. Healing started coming. And when they reacted in obedience, healing showed up. They, they started to come out of the situation they were in. And things started to change in their lives simply because they were obedient. And as they were going to the priest, the text, if you read, the text says that there was one. That was thinking. There was one that had looked at the situation and said, wait a minute. I'm coming out of what I was in. Things in my life are beginning to change. Uh, and it seems like the least I can do 
and say thank you. Uh, uh, I remember when my mama used to send us across the yard to get some sugar or flour from Miss Minnie Crawford. The last thing she would tell you before you went out the door is don't forget to say thank you. We live in a society now where folk don't say thank you anymore. Folk look at you and, and, and act like you're just supposed to do for them. You hold the door for folk and they just stroll on by you like you and... Well, do I look like I work here? Do I look like I... And see, and then that's when you got to arrest your flesh because you really want to pull them back and close the door in their face. That would... Okay, I'll talk about me. That ain't y'all. Pray for your pastor. Uh, so I'm sitting over there biting the blood out my tongue because I know if I say anything, it's going to be wrong. But that is the society that we live in. Uh, uh, that is the times or the times in which we live. Folk, don't say thank you. But this one leper out of ten uh, had the mitigating, the unmitigating goal, the audacity to turn back and find Jesus just to say thank you. But what I began to understand is this brother knew scripture. Because if you look at 1 Chronicles 16 and 34, it says, Oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he's good, for his mercy endures forever. Okay, okay, well, maybe you ain't got Chronicles in your Bible. All right, I'm sorry for you, but I'll give you this one. Psalms 107 and 1 says, Oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, for his mercy endures forever, forever, forever. Um, he knew a little scripture, uh, Brooke Curtis, and, uh, and so maybe he didn't know those two. Maybe he happened to stumble upon Psalms 118 and 1. Y'all know what it says? Oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, for his mercy endures. Okay, okay, all right. So uh, I, I, I see y'all must be from the, 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 the Hebrew society that believed the body had to be dead four days before it was really dead. So you need a number four to set it off. Okay, I'm going to give you that one. Uh, Psalms 136 and 1 says, Oh, give thanks, for he is and his mercy forever. That there, there, there's something happening here in these texts. It encourages us to give thanks to the Lord, for he is good and his mercy endures forever. So what are you saying, preacher? Even though he hasn't brought you out yet, even though he hasn't fixed it yet, even though the situation has not changed yet, you ought to give thanks to the Lord, for he is good and his mercy endures forever. You don't understand, my body's in pain, yeah. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good and his mercy endures forever you don't understand my child has lost his mind he's acting like he has no home training give thanks to the Lord for he is good and his mercy endures forever you don't understand it seems like my marriage is falling apart give thanks to the Lord for his the Lord is good and his mercy endures forever wherever you find yourself the Bible would encourage us to give thanks to the Lord for he is good and his mercy endures forever so whatever I'm dealing with whatever my challenge is whatever's going on in my life the Bible instructs me to give thanks to the Lord for he is good and his mercy endures forever so I'm gonna give him thanks I'm gonna say thank you I'm going to tell the Lord thank you. Now, if I was Arabic, I'd say shukran. If I was Danish, I'd say tak. If I was French, I'd say merci beaucoup. If I was German, I'd say dankeschön. If I was Hebrew, I'd say toda. If I was Japanese, I'd say arigato. If I was Korean, I'd say kamsamnida. If I was Russian, I'd say spatibo. If I was Spanish, I'd say gracias. If I was Swahili, I'd say asante. If I couldn't say a word, I would. But because I have my voice, because I can do it, I'm going to tell the Lord, thank you. Thank you for where you brought me from. Thank you for what you kept me from. Thank you for what you kept me in. Thank you for your deliverance in my life. Thank you for your healing in my body. Thank you for everything you've done for me.
One leper said, thank you. Thank you. And the text goes on to say, and he was a Samaritan. <laughs> Woo, that's a sermon in itself right there. He wasn't the one that was supposed to come back. He wasn't the one that was raised in church. Had to go to prayer meeting, Bible study, was there for Sunday school, and evening service on Sunday. He wasn't that one. Uh, he was the one that had laid out in the gutter. He was the one that God had to heal his liver from cirrhosis when he came to the Lord. He was one who, who had lost all his friends, didn't have a wardrobe, so he just wore whatever he had. He was that one. And the sad state of the church is these are the people we are discounting today. But he was a Samaritan. Mm. Lessons from 10 lepers. Don't become satisfied with dissatisfaction. God has more for you. God has more for you. Don't settle. Don't sell yourself cheap. Mm. Yeah, play. Please keep me from going. That's why, and, and, you know, this is not the only application, but this one dropped in my spirit. That's why we as fathers have to spend time with our daughters. You need to take your daughter out to dinner. Do a father-daughter dance or something so they can get a picture of what a real man looks like taking care of a young lady. So then when Joe Willie show up, he don't fit the picture, and you ain't got to spend the next 18 months dealing with his madness. Don't settle. God has so much for us. Don't settle in career. Don't settle in education. Don't settle in family living. We don't have to settle. But if we cry, if you find you, you're in a place where you can't help yourself, you're in a good place for the Lord to show up. Because now when he shows up, everybody has to know it was the Lord. I know what he's dealing with. It was the Lord. I know what she's going through. When she came out, oh, that had to be the Lord. Huh? Then the testimony. Because see, what? As we rest on our feet, this is my, one of my final statements. The burden of proof is not on you. The burden of proof is not on you. We have the burden of obedience. If we handle the burden of obedience, he'll handle Chapel Baptist Church, located at 3911 Dickey Mill Road in Mevin, North Carolina, where the pastor is Pastor Scotty Terrain, preaching a powerful message that will definitely bless your heart and soul. The church vision is impacting, transforming, and empowering people's lives for victorious living. Yes, this church is designed for you and mine, where the pastor is Pastor Scotty Terrain, preaching a powerful message every Sunday morning. Yes, the church location is 3911 Dickey Mill Road in Mevin, North Carolina. The telephone number for prayer, information, or directions is 578-1450. Make sure you come out to this awesome church where the pastor is Pastor Scotty Terrain of Miles Chapel Baptist Church, located again at 3911 Dickey Mill Road in Mevin, North Carolina. Now, thank you so much for watching, and may God continue to richly bless you.